What is up? Welcome to Every Single Guitars, where the goal of this channel is to review every single guitar ever made. Today I have a fun little cool guitar to review. I call it fun and I call it cool and I call it little because that's exactly what it is. Today I have a 2019 Taylor GS Mini Mahogany Acoustic guitar. If you guys can't tell by how the guitar looks on my lap, this isn't a standard or quote unquote regular sized guitar. This is actually, I believe, a three-fourth or a shrunken or mini guitar or whatever you want to call it. Everything on this guitar compared to a standard size guitar, it just feels a little bit smaller. You know, the neck feels a little bit smaller. It feels a little bit slimmer. The headstock shape for the Taylor guitar is a little bit smaller than a standard Taylor. And also, I think that this has less frets as well. I think this is a 20 fret guitar. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20 frets instead of, you know, the 21 or 22. So basically think of a standard size acoustic guitar, but just a little bit shrunken. This is a solid mahogany top, um, which is pretty surprising. I actually thought that, you know, for a guitar of this price range done by Taylor, I expected some type of laminate, like a high quality laminate. But actually after looking at the specs sheet, directly off the Taylor site. They did say it's a solid mahogany top, so I'll take their word for it. But for the back and sides, it's not a mahogany. It's actually what they call a layered sapply. Sapply or sapally or sapely. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I've actually never really heard of that wood when it comes to tone woods. And I know that for different guitar brands, there's a certain type of wood that they use more than others. But I feel like for Taylor, they use what I call the interesting tone woods and they incorporate some of their own technology with the tone woods. And because of that, for me, I feel like Taylor guitars have a very unique and specific and very distinct sound that's very different from other acoustic guitars. Taylor guitars, in my opinion, are a lot more brighter, a little louder sometimes. You know, and overall, it's just a very good sounding guitar company. But first impression of this guitar, it's a very loud guitar for the size. And actually, I can compare the loudness of this guitar to some regular sized acoustic guitars that I've owned, which to be honest, kind of blew my mind. How can a guitar of this size, of this smaller size, have such a loud sound? And honestly, I don't know how they did it. I don't know how Taylor constructed this guitar, but just from a sound standpoint and the loudness of a guitar, this is a very very loud guitar. So out of all the Taylor guitars that I've owned, I'd say that the common theme and the similarity of all the Taylors that I've played and owned is probably the neck profile. Even though I said that this neck profile is a little bit smaller and a little bit thinner, it still is very comparable to the other Taylor neck profiles out there, such as the 114, 214, 714, etc. Actually, in my opinion, I feel like Taylor acoustic necks are probably the most comfortable necks to play, regardless of what genre you're playing or what kind of style you're playing. When it comes to strumming the guitar and finger picking, Taylor guitars is just very comfortable to play overall. So this guitar goes for around $500 brand new. So if you went to Guitar Center or one of the online retailers that sell guitars, 
you'd expect to pay a little bit more than 500 bucks uh, because of tax and whatnot. And to be honest, if I had $500, I'd probably buy a standard size acoustic guitar. But I feel like that's not really the point of this guitar. I don't really think that the GS Mini was made as a main guitar. I mean, I guess you can use it as a main guitar, but I feel like for a guitar of this size and how compact and light it is, this is more of like a travel type guitar. You know, a guitar where you can just, you know, stay at home, you know, kick back on your bed and just noodle around or practice. That's the perfect type of guitar for this. Although I've seen some musicians such as Ed Sheeran play a mini sized guitar. Ed Sheeran sometimes plays a mini Martin LXM. I think I forget the model name, but it's a similar build style to this as in it's a shrunken guitar. But even though you can probably buy this to play, you know, lead guitar or whatever, I think this is the perfect type of guitar to bring at a campsite, you know, when you're, you know, at a beach or something, you know, just like a small portable and compact guitar that sounds very good. You know, Taylor guitars, like I said, are pretty loud and bright in general, but dude, this is such a small guitar. How did they make this sound so loud and so clear? I don't know what they did, but dude, respect, man. Major respect to Taylor, because this guitar sounds very good. So let me just show you some tones, how this guitar sounds, so you can have a better idea of what the tones are like. pretty high even for me you know i talk about how action height doesn't really bother me but for this particular guitar the action is actually really high and i think it's because the last owner he put on different gauge strings he told me he put on new strings but it was a thicker string and this guitar was originally set up with light strings so because of that change in guitar string gauge i think it's affected the action height a little bit playing on the lower end it's easy but when i go above the seventh fret and if i do like a bar chord it's pretty hard to um, play a clean bar chord or some type of chord but but stuff like that can be easily adjusted you can set it up no issue Try some finger picking. see me struggling playing on the higher end because like I said the action from here is good after the seventh eight ish it, it does go up high a little bit so a little tip I learned even though action height is important now I can see the importance of action height because if the strings are lower it's just easier to play it's just a fact but I did realize that if you play a guitar that has high action and you play it a long time the strength of your fingers it just gets so much stronger so when you play a guitar that's properly set up with low action dude the guitar just feels miles and miles easier I mean you know I feel like for me the guys who complain about action height and are really picky about action height they're probably the ones who bought a guitar that had great action that had perfect action because they're used to that they think low action is the norm but for most guys including myself like when i first started playing the guitar dude my squire that was my first guitar the action was 
hella high. And I thought that was just normal. So I just played it, you know, even though it was hard, I was just like, you know, this is probably what a guitar is like. And then, you know, as I got older and saw the importance of a properly set up guitar, it just changed how I played. I feel like stuff like action is very minor when you when it comes to choosing a guitar. It's just my preference. The neck on Taylor guitars is just so versatile um, in terms of what you can play. But in my opinion, strumming uh, is probably the, the biggest highlight. I mean... It's just a very loud and resonant sound. It sounds really good. sounding guitar. So if I had to give a rating for this guitar, tone, this is probably 8.5 out of 10. It's a very good sounding guitar. Apart from, you know, how small it is and how compact it is, just from a sound aspect, it's just a very good sounding guitar. For 500 bucks, the tone of this is, it's up there. It's For the Taylor guitars I've played, it's very good. Honestly, the build of this guitar, I'd give it 8 out of 10. It's very well made, even though it's the cheap line of Taylor, which is not even that cheap, you know, it's a couple hundred bucks. The quality of this is very good. The construction is, I'd say it's excellent. The ebony fretboard is very high quality. The body is high quality. Bridge and the saddles and the bridge pin is high quality. I'd say that the cheapest part of this guitar is probably the tuners. These aren't standard Taylor quality tuners, but dude, these tuners are very good. I've played this guitar heavy, I strummed it heavy. The guitar doesn't go out of tune. And if it does, it's very little to the point where I can't hear it. Overall, I'd say that this is an excellent guitar. Um, you know, if you're, like I said, if you're into camping, traveling, going to the beach, or just practicing and noodling and having fun, dude, this is guitar you probably should check out because it's a pretty damn good guitar.